Welcome everyone. I'm happy to be here with three friends and colleagues, William Weins from Belgium, Christoph Naber from Germany and Thomas Crisset from France, discussing the highlights in current interventions of PCR 2015. Bioreservoir scaffolds are still a hot topic in our everyday practice. But was it really a hot topic at the Congress as well? I would say yes, because there has been a lot of discussion. Number one, we've seen pre preliminary and early data about new devices coming. There's a number of devices coming. And uh, we saw some updates on, uh, on uh, real-world data. Um, we didn't see any new uh, trials, but the discussion was very practical. The discussion was since we have now uh, for the community there are two uh, devices available and uh, so the question is now on patient selection, which is the right patient that I select, which is the lesion that I can treat. Um, we have first generation devices, so we have some limitations uh, on this uh, topic and then both of these scaffolds have different uh, abilities, they have uh, you know, the unique profiles and they have to implant it in different ways. And this exchange of tips and tricks, this very practical way, that was a big, big topic on this Congress, I think. William, what was the memorable for you in the field of Korean interventions? I was very impressed by some of the new uh, invasive imaging studies, but I tell you, to me this year, what I was most impressed with is that CTO intervention really has displaced the frontiers of what we can achieve with coronary intervention. You see amazing, amazing results, acutely at least, with some of these techniques that now allow to reopen vessels that have been occluded for decades. And I can see that there is a lot of interest from more colleagues to learn on how to perform these procedures successfully. So there was a lot of interest in learning these techniques step by step and becoming a good CTO doctor. Very impressive. Thomas, the great debate this year was about double antiplatelet therapy. What you bring home from the Congress? Yes, it's true. It was on, on Tuesday. The great debate about DAPT duration was chaired by Andreas uh, Bomba and, and Martin Gillar. And I think the, the great debate nicely I liked the difference between the evidence, the scientific evidence, which try to find one solution for all the patients, and the practice, in which we try to find a solution for one individual patient. And I think it was very well discussed during the great debate that at the end the DAPT duration cannot be the same for all the patients and all the stent, all the PCI. And we have to tailor it. And we have to tailor it based on the PCI for the prevention of stent thrombosis, according to the stent we implant and the type of PCI, but also to tailor it based on the patient clinical characteristic. And interestingly, the recent data, especially the DAPT study, in this study, the patient risk profile really drive the benefit of the long-term DAPT duration. And I think that's really an important message for the community to realize that we should base our DAPT duration based on the patient. And also it will be also a dynamic decision. We always try to define the DAPT duration just after PCI. But we know that during the first year, some patients will experience recurrent ischemic events, others will bleed. So we don't know how patients will behave during the first months after PCI. So we can plan DAPT duration just after implanting the stent. But in half of the case, at least, this decision will change according to the patient outcome. Thank you very much for pointing out all these highlights. Thank you.